MPU, Memory Protection Unit. MPU is a memory protection mechanism that allows to define specific access rights for any memory map resources of the device. Flash memory, SRAM, and peripheral register. This protection is dynamically managed at runtime. That means you should configure it in your code. MPU attributes are only set for the CPU access. That means another master on the bus could access all the data, for example a DMA. But I will give you some details after. Cortex-M architecture defines two execution modes, allowing a process to run either privileged or unprivileged mode. For each region of the MPU, the access attribute can be set independently. The purpose of the MPU is to control and restrict which subsystem can access what memory region and how, in read and write and execute. So it prevents user application from creating data used by the operating system. In the case you've got some kernel, you execute it in a privileged mode, and you've got the task in unprivileged region defined in your MPU. It's separating data between processing task by blocking task from accessing other data. That means you can ensure that this task can access those data from the kernel. Detected unexpected memory access, for example, a stack corruption. In addition, the MPU can also be used to define memory access characteristics such as caching and buffering behavior for the different regions. We could configure up to 16 regions depending on the core, and any illegal access will drive you to an exception fault. Configuration of the MPU should be done and must be done only in the privileged mode. The MPU can cover DMA access, so DMA has a full access on the memory map. In a constraint of security, if you want to use MPU for isolation, you should have this in mind. For each region, we've got some memory attributes. First, we can put a region in execute never. Then we've got some data access permission. I will give you details in the next slide. For the tip extension, with shareable, cacheable, and bufferable, I will also have a slide after. Then, on each region, there is some sub-region that you can activate or deactivate. Then you've got the size of the memory region defined. Memory access permission. As previously stated, you've got one for the privileged and unprivileged execution. And you can define if it's no access, read-only, or read-write. Cache properties and shareabilities. It's a little bit more complicated. First, we've got memory type, normal, device or strongly ordered. In normal mode, the load and the store is not necessarily performed by the CPU in the order list in your program. That means the core could rearrange them a little bit. Sometimes it could be an issue. In device mode, it takes place first in the device region for sure, and the load and the store are done in the strictly order of your program. This is important when you access a device or when you configure a register to ensure it was done exactly in the good order. On the strongly order one, everything is always done in the programmatically listed order, and the CPU waits the end of the load of the store before executing the next one. So I will say execute everything is in the order like in your program. So this is a memory type you can define thanks for three flags. And after you can see that in normal, you have one, two, three description with write through, no write allocate, Right back, no write allocate, right back with write and read allocate. I prefer to give you the definition in the next slide because it's a little bit tough, I would say. Then you can have the attribute shareable or not for those. So about those properties. So write through with no write allocate. In this case, on its, it's write to the cache and the main memory. On miss, it updates the block in the main memory, but non-breaking that block to the cache. For the write back with no write allocate, on it, it's write to the cache setting dirty bits for the block, and the main memory is not updated. But on miss, it updates the block in the main memory, not bringing that block to the cache. For the write back on the write and read allocate, for the first part, it's exactly the same than the previous, but on miss, it updates the block in the main memory and bring the block to the cache. This is not an easy aspect, but it's something to have in mind when you want to ensure coherency and uh, also performance. Some tips. First, the MPU is used at runtime to isolate sensitive code and to manage access to resources according to process currently executing by the device. 
So it's require re really a good programming skill to manage to switch from one mode to another mode. When I'm talking about mode was from privilege to unprivilege. Often it's associated with some OS on secure OS. Another aspect I want to give you a couple of words is what with Cortex M7, where you have the feature of speculative prefetch, and it could have a possible impact on the memory or device which are sensitive to multiple access. So to prevent the speculative prefetch, you can just configure the region in a strictly ordered or to in device memory, thanks to the MPU. Let's check in the family the availability. As you can see, MPU is available on all our STM32 family, except the F0 with the Cortex M0. Here you've got many references, and I really advise you to go deeply if you want to configure MPU. First, it's a quite general one, managing memory protection unit. So I will say you've got a good overview, then you have to go in each uh, processor programming manual to have details.